What's up guys, Specstar here today with my third and final battle of the round two pools. Oh, and I'm with my co-star, my co-host Shadow. Say hello to the people. <laughs> anyway, he wanted to interrupt by walking on my laptop, but uh, I've got the third and final battle of the round two pools in the TTM March Madness tournament. This one is to move on to the top 56 down from the 320 who entered the tournament. Either of those numbers could be wrong. I'm remembering not the authority to know this. Um, anyway, this one, if you guys have seen my other videos, if you haven't, do it. I need views. I need them. So you go watch it. If you have seen those other videos, you will know that this one is for all of the marbles as... I am 1-1 one one in this round, and in the previous round I was 4-0 with very high differential, and my differential is pretty good right now too. I'm not bragging, I'm explaining that I will essentially seal one of the wild card spots they have if I win this game, because my differential will be so high that among uh, the 6-1 and one people, and I wouldn't imagine there'd be too many who don't make who don't make brackets automatically among them it should have me at the top with my differential anyway enough yapping on about differential you guys have heard enough of me saying differential if you hear me say differential one more time you're probably just gonna block the word differential you don't want to hear anyone say differential so i will now be facing carney here for all the marbles as i've said He's got a team consisting of Mega Bonnet, Primarina, Zygarde, not Father, just regular Zygarde. In case you guys were thinking I was going up against Big Papa, I thought that was a very important distinction to make. Cryogonal, Frothorn, and Swellow. And I've got myself a team consisting of a defensive Lander Syrian, which is special attacking bold with U-turn and rocks as well if i'm not mistaken this is basically just um this is, this is my shot for dealing with the zygarde uh, i could potentially try to defensively check it with suicune but in this matchup i thought it was more important to bring a suicune that could be reserved for potentially sweeping opportunities next up i got weavile which is banded Z weavile's adamant banded to be clear zero aura which is Jolly Bandit? I believe so. Nope, not even close. Not even close. It's Calm Mind 3 attacks. That was a bad, bad memory. It's Calm Mind Expert Belt with Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, and HP Ice. Suicune, Physically Defensive, a bit of Speed, Calm Mind, Protect, Substitute, Scald. <laughs> my favorite, my absolute favorite. Roserade, which is rock and specially defensive with spikes and synthesis, plus the hidden power coverage for Frothorn and Giga Drain. And Steelix, which is specially defensive, sheer force leftovers with Fire Fang, Ice Fang, which you guys can see Zygarde and Frothorn are for, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock. So, let's get this show on the road. Um, let's go here. Alright, so he's going to lead off with, well, I'm going to lead off with Steelix. He's going to lead off with Frothorn. I'm just going to go for Fire Fang. I imagine we both get rocks up and then he'd switch out. I wanted to get Fire Fang damage off first, and now I can get my rocks up now that I can ensure that thing's at low of health. So he's going to go into his Primarina here as I get up my rocks. And whenever I see Primarina, my response is going to be to go into Roserade here. And he is going to pull the double into Frothorn, and I get Roserade in. And I'm actually pretty glad that happened, because he pulled a double into something that I have hidden coverage for. So uh, it doesn't look like I brought Roserade in on Frothorn as a designated answer to it. He doesn't know if I can touch it. And he's about to find out right now that indeed I can touch it, as I just go for the hidden power fire. And that will take down the Ferrothorn. That will be all she wrote. 
and I'm going to get back up to health with my wonderful black sledge as he brings in his cryogonal. I imagine he's going to try to spin, so I'll bring in my specially defensive Celix to make sure I keep rocks up. They're very important for getting Swellow into range of a few things that are important to me. He will spin him away, and I am just going to reestablish him as he goes on the Bonnet. So, uh, Bonnet, Mega Bonnet, a lot of its best attacks and the moves I thought it was most likely to go for are Prankster. And since Dark types are immune to Prankster, I thought Weavile would actually be a safe switch in. Have you ever heard anyone say those words before? Weavile is a safe switch in? I know I've never heard of that, but I believe Weavile may be a safe switch in here, so I will go into my Weavile. I'll exert my pressure as he mega evolves and he goes for Calm Mind, which is pretty interesting to see. I still don't know what his set is, so I'm going to go for knockoff here. He then shows off the Cotton Guard, and I'm going to share some of my thought process with you. Right here, I calculated myself. I reserved all my thoughts and thought of thought this through all the way, thinking about what my best play is. And I came to the conclusion, holy shit, I better not get swept by a bonnet that would end my goddamn career. So after I had that thought, I'm going to move on and think, okay, well, he is, he's probably got, for his last two moves, I would imagine rest, and then probably shadow ball. Not this shadow ball, you're a different shadow ball. But uh, I'd imagine rest and S ball. So I think that if I go into Suicune, I should be able to outstall this thing with my calm minds. I will bring in the Suicune here. Exert my pressure once again. He's gonna go for Shadow Ball and do a not not a lot, considering it's plus one and I'm plus zero. He goes for his calm mind as I also go for my calm mind. I'm gonna set a few of them up. Get another one here. And then he will shadow ball me again, not doing much after a few calm minds. This time I believe I actually went for my scald. I did and it's going to do a little bit. Uh, he goes for another con guard. I'm just going to keep calm minding here. I want to take the thing out without running my health too low. Go for another scald there. Do get the burn. Uh, he can rest here, but I know he doesn't have sleep talk. He instead shows pain split. So I am just going to figure that I keep pressing scald and don't bother to heal myself. Eventually this thing's going to go down. And Suicune will be low, but not low to a point of uselessness. Here I get to protect and let the thing go down to burn, and Suicune's going to walk away with 41%. So there's a big threat that's down. I've also never, you guys have probably, I've also never heard someone call Mega Panetta a big threat before. He gets Zygarde in, I go into my physically defensive Landorus. He's locked into an Outrage, so I just go for my Hidden Power Ice. Um, an interesting thing I noted from his Outrage, he is boosted, but not ban damage boosted, so that means he's either Muscle Band or Draco Plate, so, or I guess it could be a Dragon Scale, which is an item, even though I don't always remember it as an item, but it's somehow boosted, but it's good for me to know that it's not C user, that can kind of simplify the way I strategize around it. He's going to get forced out. Fortunately, I have some useful chip on it. He goes into Primarina. I go to U-turn, predicting him to want to get out of there. I get to bring in my Zero Aura to click Thunderbolt. He shows the Wakan Berry and actually munches it, but fortunately, Zero Aura is going to survive the Moon Blast. He goes for Protect. I'm just going to keep clicking Thunderbolt. I don't want to take a risk at this point because I'm up. He goes into Zygarde as a Thunderbolt again. Uh, I don't want to risk losing my Zero Aura to an Extreme Speed, so I'm going to go into my Landorus. Especially because Zero Aura looks like it just cleans right now. It's important for me to save. My Landers will go down here. So I'm actually going to go to Steelix. And that is not because Steelix is the best thing I can bring in here. It's because I'm trying to bait him into letting Zygarde go down. Because once Zygarde goes down, then I can just put my focus on winning with Weavile. And I don't have to worry about its health in relation to rocks. It's important... To explain, it's important for me to keep Weavile out of range of E-Speed, of course. It's Panama, Paramount. 
he brings it. But I bring in my Steelix here. I'm trying to bait him into staying in, going for arrows, and letting me Ice Fang it, especially because he doesn't have much for switching on this. But he is going to go into Primarina instead. My Ice Fang to zero. This thing is bulky. I'm going to have to go into my Rose Raid here. He's going to make a good play predicting that and growing into Cryogonal. But as I have throughout the game with Cryogonal in, I'm going to go into my Steelix. And if he wants to spin, I'm going to get my rocks back up. <laughs> it's a, a match here of who's more stubborn with the spinning rocks. Uh, I'm going to get them up. He'll freeze dry. Here, I'm just going to click my... Did I go for Fire Fang here? I did go for Fire Fang here. And it's going to do a ton of Cryogonal. He'll spin. I'm going to get rocks up here as he freeze dries. Here, I know it's just a losing war, and I'm going to have to click my Fire Fang and take down the Cryogonal without my rocks up. But it's good to get rid of the Cryogonal. It makes things better for Roserade, and it potentially gives a little bit more usefulness to Suicune. Swellow will come in, and um, I just want to Ice Fang the thing to make sure that it's in range of some of my priority. Well, my Ice Fang in particular, it's already in that. It's not right. <laughs> Man, I wanted to make sure it was in range of my Zero Aura's Hidden Power Ice. So this is what I mean to say. Uh, plus, I can also learn more about its set. So I will just go for my Ice Fang. Uh, I'm going to get burned here. Didn't really come into play that much. He goes in Primarina here as I go for another Ice Fang. And this thing is going to... as, Or I should say I'm going to go into Roserade as that thing goes for Scald. Still playing safe here, I kind of have to screw up. I'm going to be able to get up my T-Spikes here, which means that Zygarde is just so much easier to deal with. So it, I was very happy when I was able to get up my T-Spikes here. I know that this thing is no longer a risk to potentially turn things around here. So he goes in a Swallow, I go into Steelix. I'm just going to let Steelix go down. It was a tactical sack there. Now I can bring in my Zero Aura and force a KO, because it is... Definitely specs, which means it's definitely in range of my hidden power ice. So something is going to die. That thing's going to be Primarina, and it's going to go down to a combination of the ice and the T spikes. Now he's going to bring in Zygarde, and I, I'm going to think here that I'm just going to let Zero Aura go and click hidden power ice here, and that's because at this point for me to lose this game, I've got to screw up. I've got to let him dragon dance and. There is none of that going on. I'm just going to attack it. No setup opportunities. Here, I'm going to bring in my Rose Raid to make sure I got Suicune and Suicune and the um, blah word salad. Suicune and Weavile preserved intact. That's what I meant to say. I'm going to take the Zygarde down there with Rose Raid. Swallow comes in. I just let Rose Raid go down, and then Weavile gets to wrap things up with Ice Shard here. So we are going to finish the brackets at. 2 and 1 plus 6, and then our total score as it relates to wild card is we're at 6 and 1 plus 21. So that's a pretty good win for us there. It was also a fun game that had uh, some interesting twists and turns here and there. And you know, Carney is always a good bet to bring some unorthodox sets, so uh, GG to him. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It looks like there's going to be at least one more video for this. Uh, there's going to be brackets coming up. And they are going to be live streamed on Twitch on the Token Minorities channel. And you may catch some of me there, a lot of me, none of me, whatever the hell. They're going to be streaming those on the 16th, and the live streaming battles as they happen. I'll be in some of them. I'll have a link to that channel in the description, but I'm also going to upload the videos to my YouTube with my commentary explaining the plays from my perspective. And that's going to be it for this video. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a good night.